What up, y'all? It's Joe Button here to talk about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to win real money while watching football. You can get up to 100 times your money. Prize Picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. Summer's here, and you can now get almost anything you need for your sunny days delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a well-groomed lawn delivered, but you can get a chicken parmesan delivered. A cabana? That's a no. But a banana? That's a yes. A nice tan? Sorry. Nope. But a box fan? Happily, yes. A day of sunshine? No. A box of fine wines? Yes. Uber Eats can definitely get you that. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got Paul Graham for you coming out of Austin, Texas. And he helps investors turn their finances into joy with habits and systems that align with their ideal life. He's got an amazing background, amazing entrepreneur investing background. And I'm really happy to have him on the show to share his experience of wisdom. So Paul, welcome. Thanks for having me. And yeah, excited to share and, and probably just have a good conversation. So. Yeah, I love uh, I love talking with entrepreneurs, and it's just to have that vibe in the podcast. And t- introduce yourself, what how, what you do, how you got there, and we'll, I'm excited to dive into the meat of the conversation. Yeah, you bet. So, just the shortest elevator pitch of sorts of my life could be that um, I tried to apply for a patent um, at age ten. Uh, my mom said no, she wouldn't give me forty thousand dollars to do that patent, right? Um, and so I had to come these difficult times in my life, if you will. At age 18, um, I had a residential exterior painting business that I ran for about two years, graduated college early, went into commercial real estate software sales, and really found a love for real estate. I then became a current real estate broker and realized I didn't want that noise. I wanted to invest in real estate, not be around these buyers and just these companies that just didn't know what they really wanted. And what I want is I didn't want to help people. And so I ended up becoming a co-founder of a company that builds an algorithm to help entry-level professionals. Grew that, ended up being a product manager for about seven years and really found that I'm amazing at connecting people to capital. And so I've done fundraising for oil and gas and invest in different syndications. I have my own personal portfolio, but really when it comes down to it, like I just love building. I love the idea of having a bucket of Legos and just like creating something. And so one big thing I've been focused on is helping product managers being connected with series A and C type companies to just build anything of just trying and building and failing has just been what I've done over my career. Yeah, it's really, you're really sounds like you're a natural born entrepreneur. And what's interesting is real estate. I got my financial freedom through real estate and I realized it was very slow and bulky. You can get financially free, but there are other ways like software and entrepreneurship. So how did you start building your real estate portfolio? What key strategies helped you? leverage uh, it to fund your ideal life, which you're living now? Yeah, certainly. So I would say initially it was like vision, perspective, and education first, right? Because then I could understand what asset class do I want to go for? How would I go there? So I went a very W-2 route. And so I was able to double my W-2 income in four years, saving 40% gross salary, right? Not after taxes, but just like gross. And so that really propelled house hacking, buying, just waiting, using appreciation, leveraging, 1031 exchanging. And then now I have a portfolio of some short-term rentals. I own some land and I have a long-term rental in addition to some syndications. And the other thing I found, again, with that kind of mindset piece is I recognized what type of lifestyle I wanted to have. So I really love wake boating and wake surfing, right? And so I realized that I could just rent a boat instead of having to like have all this money to buy a boat. So really my definition of joy was specific, right? I love everything with water, being on water, in water, drinking water, looking at water, right? Wake surfing, like everything with water. But I realized like there were ways that I could have my ideal life without having to have these, hey, I have a 300 unit portfolio, right? Nothing bad against that. But my perspective really changed. And what that ended up happening is I then focused more on like myself and the things that bring me joy. And I truly found the most joy when I put the most amount of work, effort and interest in myself not just the, oh, I got to travel this many times a year, do these things or have this stuff. 
but really find that within myself. And that really just changed like what was my leap number and what does that lifestyle look like? And regardless of the income, if I'm able to live my ideal life each day, then that's that that's a great day, right? Not being fo- so mo- focused on like the outcome, but really like the experience and, and loving the walk in the process has just been absolutely transformative and letting go of this thing called control, which took, took a fair amount of time. Really fascinating because I was, it really reminds me because I was like in my early days of real estate investing, I was like, yeah, I'm going to own the property in each of my favorite locations. Going international, I was like, yeah, this is going to be really pain in the ass to be friends sure. with. And I was like, why not build a, like a scalable business that makes the same amount and you can take it anywhere and you don't have to deal with like tenants, toilets, and trash, hurricanes, yep. earthquakes. <laughs> uh, insurance. Yeah, for sure. And that, and that's one big, I got this piece of perspective a while ago that I'd love to share. It's from Jamie Gruber. So Jamie Gruber is one of the guys who helps run GoBundance, right? So GoBundance is a mastermind to help you live your basically like ideal life holistically. And he gave this perspective of what kind of problems do you want to have, right? What kind of life do you want to live? He raised funds for a bunch of multifamily deals. And he then has those responsibilities. It has to have that knowledge and have to have that thing. Like if what you're doing to build wealth doesn't fundamentally align with the direction you want to go, then there's that conflict, right? And that's going to be even more resistance for you to even build wealth because it's just going to constantly resisting your life. I have a number of exercises on my website. People can download if they want of just like a solo weekend, a three-year vision, a eulogy, right? These type of things that really give us the ability to recognize like who we are and where we're going and what we truly want, and then go build the buy box and then invest. I love short-term rentals, but every other day, basically, I get a message of something's wrong or needs to change. And so that then has been challenging in my ideal life. I could just go invest in short-term rental portfolio syndications. I could do it with a partner. I could do a completely different asset class. My point is just because I love or have an interest in something, like you love traveling and being around the world. Like I love that idea. And how I have then take that is like, maybe I go get a Marriott Vacation Club membership, or maybe I figure out how to credit card travel hack and then go to places of the world or meet people internationally. And I just go stay with them. Just all these different ways to have that same result. I just found initially in my life that I really felt it was like I had to be that millionaire and make the 200K a year type stuff in order to have some of these things. And that's where this idea of the investor's guide to join the brand I have has really been just such a fruitful thing because it's maximizing income for impact while learning and exploring like your own joy and and what that's really doing. Yeah. We touched upon this in our, like our last two exchanges and what you're describing is the wealth trap and you talk about being lost in this trap. What are common signs and how can people escape it? Yeah, the big thing I found is, yeah, just like understanding yourself and like what you're actually going for. There's a fascinating concept of investing for returns, right? Investing for like community, right? And then also as a faith type of individual, like investing for eternity. So it's maybe not just buying that multifamily property and raising rents and like gentrifying it, right? Maybe it's only a portion of that, right? But you recognize that you're able to really pour into the community and really help support humans which is what really value adds is, is helping people solve their problems. Just doing those things has really helped me again change how I approach things. For the person who maybe is in their W-2, a fascinating thought I've had is this salary helps me invest or maybe this excess helps me reinvest into maybe a startup company I have. And I'm now my own venture capitalist in my own company, right? Like those types of things are, I believe, so much more empowering sometimes Instead of, hey, I don't like this job. This isn't the best you know, kind of stuff. So ha- that perspective has really helped me. There's been other times, honestly, where I've just been like, hey, I'm a consultant, if you will, right? Hey, you need me to do X, Y, and Z. I really want to do this other thing. Oh, you don't want me to do that? Okay, then I will do X, Y, and Z. You need that by Thursday? Great, I will do that Thursday. And so in some ways, not necessarily sandbagging it, if you will, but just like doing what's absolutely needed And maybe not it's your best, but it's using then your other skills, talents, and times to do other things. The last thing I'll say is just there's a difference between alive time and dead time. And sometimes it's important to just wait and take things in. I was on a um, call with uh, Brandon Turner, if anyone who's an investor, you know, knows him. And he talked about how after he left Bigger Pockets, he was encouraged to not do anything for a year. 
just sit and be and not immediately change his identity. And he found really after six months, he started the Better Life Tribe and then his fund and things like that. So it's just important to have those moments of peace, calm, quiet, not just chaos. Hey, I have to buy these deals. I have to do these things. So those have been a number of different perspectives I had. And then it's just doing it too. You can think all day and consume, but doing it actually moves the chains. Yeah, really fascinating. The other thing you touched upon and you talked about is surrendering control for success. And how did the concept of letting go of control play in your success? And how can listeners incorporate this mindset into their lives? Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones because for the longest time, I felt like I had to have enough cash flow to go write a book or start this brand or do this thing. And then I came up with this concept of a fish climbing a tree. So if you've ever seen a fish climbing a tree, it's a sight that you can't unsee, right? It's a fish climbing a tree. But the fish climbing a tree has the skills, resources, tools, knowledge to be able to climb the tree. And they have the utmost faith that they should do it, right? Maybe some sort of like faith belief aspect, but they also have faith and belief like in themselves that they can do it. And so if at any point in either one of those ways, they get discouraged or unsure, it's then an opportunity for growth. Hey, who are the people that I need to be around who could help me climb this tree or who have done it before and just go and talk to them? What then I found is by letting go of control, I'm more focused on like external like actions and just like loving the walk and trying and experiencing than necessarily me just being like, hey, no, this has to happen. You're my next customer. Like, why won't you buy type thing? And it's more of focusing on the best results, right? So the best result might be greater than what you believe it is. And so by letting go of that, it's just to say, hey, like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do these reps. I'm going to do these great things. And maybe I don't need enough cash flow to leave my job. Maybe I'm okay with it being 80% of where it's at, but I have some safety nets and I have some opportunities and things like that. Just conversations to have with yourself and reflection to then get tactical, right? And so again, that emotion helps then take that action. And so now from a control standpoint, it's I've actually had to bring back my control a little bit because I have been sometimes too, oh, it'll work out, it'll everything will be fine. And I had a realization this morning of I can do the cold plunges and the running and the heavy workouts and all this stuff. But did I make the 20 calls to actually talk to people, right? Mm Because otherwise you just have blind optimism. So there's that balance of execution but not at the sake of that, but without expectation type, like not even balance, but just process, right? Because I don't believe it's a balance. It's just is what it is. Less control, execute, have that sort of piece. Yeah. You, what you're, what you, I think what you're touching upon is a lot of people, like we have a lot of doctors, lawyers, they, they're, they're trapped. Like they got, they got a mortgage kid, they got a wife, they got student loans and they think they, they think they got to be like, have a, 20, 30 million before they can stop things. And it's, it's really right. amazing how much, how little you, you need to, to actually survive and thrive. It's just the, kind of this, 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 you know, what we call control. Yeah. Do you, uh, you mentioned creating habits, which is interesting. Yeah. What habit systems have you developed to help you align? So it depends on my goal, right? So I want to have those things also abide in my ideal day. So just quickly, my ideal day is having some sort of morning routine changes sometimes, but involves some sort of devotional, some sort of like 30 minute walk, 30 grams of protein. I also look at my finances and express gratitude with my finances, regardless of where they're at, because that's a tool that I can then go utilize and help hire people and change people's lives. Right. And so it's not a lack of, it's not from a view of lack. It's a sense of abundance. From there, I'll have two to four hours of focused work where my phone is physically off in another room, close the door. Like it's so helpful. And then I'm meeting at least one new person a day. I'm doing something I love and enjoy with people I love and enjoy late afternoon, night. Sometimes that could be with myself. The habits I've then created are one that kind of systematized process, right? Where I've dedicated time, but I also have fluid time. And it's more of what that goal and that season is. So I've done 75 hard successfully twice. I've also done the Live Hard program. Right now I'm doing something called Project 50, which is a little bit more geared towards learning a new skill and dedicating time towards that, but it's less on the physical fitness side. And so in order to understand what type of habits to form, it's also like where you're going. And a big thing I found is like, what type of identity do you have? If you desire to just change your life by one simple degree versus 10, those are going to be different things. And so 
uh, some of the biggest changes I found is, like, hey, if I desire to be like a 10 million, 100 million dollar type software co-founder, that's just like an absolute prodigy. Not only what habits do they have, but how do they think about the habits and how do they go about their day? It's also not just taking the 20 phone calls, if you will, but it's how you're showing up in the 20 phone calls, right? And doing those emails or outreach or things like that. So for the most part, it's some sort of action towards your goals. Maybe it's like reaching out to five investors today if you're like raising capital. If you're looking to leave your job, maybe it's connecting with five people who could be potential clients so that you can leave your law profession and start your own business or talking to business owners because you want to buy a business, like stuff like that. Um, but also something health, wellness related, um, something with other people. And then also just some sort of routine, especially in the morning, but also sometimes at night to really prepare that next day and really just reflection. So it's obviously going to depend on the person, but I really hope those like high level things can help. And fundamentally, if you don't know where to start on my website, I'll continue building out like these different challenges. 75 hard, project 50. There's a 30 day like Tim Ferriss challenge. Uh, to Robbins has a seven day challenge. There's all these like things where just if you spent a certain amount of time only doing these dedicated things, like you will naturally build those types of habits and grow from there. Yeah. Really, I know we have around four or five minutes remaining and entrepreneurship's not for the faint of hearted. And um, so how do you handle setbacks or how do you handle past emotional traumas? Do you have a forgiveness practice or how do you manage mm. negative things in your life? Yeah, don't have a forgiveness practice, but it's interesting. Um, gratitude definitely helps, right? And being specific to say, hey, I am thankful for this place that I currently live in because it provides me a safe space to grow, develop, learn, sleep you know, eat, things like that. Like I get specific be and do because statements with it too. Instead of just, I'm thankful for my shoes. Like why, right? The other thing I found is that there's a lot of different reasons of why we get mentally like blocked and why we don't do things. So sometimes that's like, we don't want to be successful because we're afraid what other people think or our family never reached a certain level. So me going beyond that, it's the crab in the bucket sort of mentality. So again, understanding yourself more really helps. What attachment style do you have? What kind of Myers-Briggs or Enneagram or DISC or all these different things that like just help you understand yourself more? Then you can frame what that looks like and how you show up. I know that whenever I get hyper stressed, basically I get hyper social and it's because I want to go talk to people to see if they maybe know the problem or I just don't want to work, right? That really helps me. And the last thing is something that I found interesting and something I watched and read about recently, where it's just this idea is from the bananas, like minor league team that just do like fun baseball, right? And they're just like, we have a culture of failing. We know that from failing, it's the other side of thing. And really, that's just a sense of trying. And so it's the idea of having a thought, executing on it for a certain number of times, and then having a reflection point and then changing it. I have a podcast and I did about 30 episodes and I recognized that how I was doing it is not how I wanted to continue doing it. So I changed it, right? It's not, I view a failure. It's just changing and tweaking and constantly iterating. So it's more of recognizing like how to be an entrepreneur is really just growing with the market and growing with your customers. And you're not really failing unless you're not trying that you can never say you, you were in the arena, if you will. So those things have really truly helped me at different stages. And obviously having all them would help. Really the fish climbing a tree is the last thing that really helps me. Again, is skills, knowledge, tools, resources, or is it just like belief type mm -hmm. thing? So, and then you're just an entrepreneur and then <laughs> you just live your best life and kumbaya. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I really enjoyed this conversation and the audience really feels inspired. And how can they find you, check out your socials and so on? Yeah, I'm most active on LinkedIn right now. I'm building more guides and references on my website. So that's the best place. There's also ebooks and whatnot. I raise funds for oil and gas as well as partner with people. So it's really just to say, find me and I'd be more than happy to help give perspective or make connections. I've had doctor or lawyer friends leave their profession. Happy to connect people to those people as well, because what we want to do, someone I believe has done something similar to it. We just sometimes need to take action and support. So happy to provide that along the way at investorsguidetojoy.com or like I said, on LinkedIn, Paul H. Graham. It's how I'm viewed on LinkedIn. Yeah. And it's the, and I love the name Paul Graham. It's legendary. Yes. 
Um, yeah, I was tagged in the wrong post today and it's just, wow, what an amazing opportunity for me to have different interactions or just laugh about it and be like, oh yeah, there's another person with my name. Let's go do great things for the world to benefit. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on and really keep up the great work and, and I'm really inspired. So thanks. Thank you. No, really enjoyed our conversation and yeah, look forward to meeting again.